Now that you know a little about JavaScript and its history, we'll move on to writing JavaScript for the browser, both inline and as an external script file. We'll be programming a small amount of HTML. I'll explain each part of it in a bit, but don't worry if you don't understand something. If anyone's wondering, I'll be using Atom as an IDE, Integrated Development Environment, or an application to write code in. You're free to use anything you want to edit your code, even edit your own code in a plain text editor. As someone who has tutored before, I would strongly recommend going with whatever is the simplest and something you're most comfortable with, especially if this is your first time programming. Do not use large, complex applications for writing code if you're not comfortable with them. I'll make an HTML file first. The first thing that should be in any HTML page is the doc type declaration. This tells the web browser what version of HTML the page is written in. In this case, we'll be writing HTML5, so I'll use the doc type for HTML5. Next, define the HTML tag, the root element for the page. I'll specify that should be in English. It's really not that important, but yeah. Next, the head element, where we'll specify the title of the page to show in the tab. And then the content of the page, body. I'm only going to add one element to the body for this example, the script tag. The script tag is what defines inline and external JavaScript. Traditionally, it could also refer to scripts other than JavaScript, but in HTML5, the type is assumed to be JavaScript. Anyway, we'll write our first Hello World program in here. I'll write the code and then explain what it's doing. To view the HTML page, you can simply double-click the HTML file or drag over your web browser icon. Put bluntly, this code tells the window to display an alert with the text, Hello World. Now some more detail. Window. JavaScript, like most programming languages, have built-in functionality and structures that allow programs to interact with the outside environment. Window is a global variable that represents the window object where the script is running in the browser. For JavaScript running in the browser, this is always the top level object. Now the alert. Alert is a function in JavaScript. Functions are programs within programs. You can give a function a parameter or an argument, have it execute a sequence of instructions, the function body, and return a result. We'll get into more details about how to define functions later. For now, just know that an alert is a built-in function that is on the window object that displays a message box. The dot between window and alert specifies that we're referencing an alert function, and that's part of the window object. As is, this statement won't do anything. We aren't calling the alert function here, we're just referencing it. In order to call the function in JavaScript, you need to add open and close parentheses, like this. This will call the function and display a message box, but nothing will be shown in it. In order to show a message, we need to add an argument to the function. Arguments are added in between the parentheses. The alert function is pretty lenient in what it accepts as arguments, so we'll just put a number in there to demonstrate. And now another number. To display a message, we'll specify a string argument. Strings are a span of characters surrounded by either single quotes, double quotes, or backticks. Backticks are for a special ES6 feature known as template literals. We'll get into those later. In JavaScript, using single and double quotes has the same meaning when defining a string, so this would be okay.
I prefer using single quotes as it adheres to the standard JS specification, but it's mostly a stylistic preference. And speaking of style, those of you who are already familiar with programming or JavaScript programming may be wondering why I'm not using a semicolon or why I'm specifying the window object if it's implicit. Semicolons in JavaScript and many other languages define the end of a statement of code. However, a line break also typically defines the end of a statement of code in JavaScript, with some exceptions. It is argued that the primary reason semicolons were added in JavaScript was to make developers with a C or Java background feel more comfortable. As someone who's programmed in Java before learning JavaScript, I can attest that I would add pointless semicolons even. Now that I'm more comfortable with JavaScript, I don't add them. They're typically not allowed in the standard JS spec either, which is just a stylistic preference as mentioned earlier. As for the window object, the window object is a special case for JavaScript in the browser. It too is optional. The above code could be written and it would still work. I included the window object in this example because it explicitly shows that I'm calling a function on the window. So while it's possible to write scripts this way, typically what you'll want to do is make the script file separate from the HTML. There are a number of advantages to making a script a separate file. It can speed up performance if multiple pages refer to the same script file because the browser can cache requests to the same file. It avoids code duplication. It is typically easier to use tools like linters if the script is separate. And there's others. Here's how to load a script separately. And we'll add the script.js file in the same directory as the index.html file. This will more or less work the same exact way as the inline script. Once the script tag is reached, it will download and execute the code inside of it. Another detail about the script tag. It can be placed in either the head or the body element. For performance reasons, when loading synchronous scripts, it is often encouraged to place the script tag at the bottom of the body element. That way, the page content loads and is parsed before waiting for the script to download and execute. Making it the last element also has other advantages. Later on, We'll get into query selectors or accessing elements in the document object model. If the script is the last element in the body, I can do this without waiting for the script or page to completely load. If that script came before the h1 tag, hello would not appear. If your web server supports HTTP2, you also have the option to load external scripts asynchronously. And if the script is in the head element, you can load the script while the page content downloads. To download a script while the page content is downloading, Add async to the script tag. To download the script while the page content is downloading and execute the script after the HTML is parsed, use the defer attribute. On supported browsers, using defer in the head element will behave the same way as if the element was added to the bottom of the body tag. The difference is that assuming the web server supports loading scripts in parallel, 
you potentially get a slight performance boost. But for now, I just recommend sticking to script tag at the bottom of the body tag. It's a lot easier to reason. And that covers it for this session. You should now have a bit of understanding of how JavaScript loads and how it executes. You should also have an understanding of how scripts load and the options available for loading scripts inline or externally. Or if the browser and server permit, loading an external script in parallel with the rest of the page. Now that we know how to load scripts, we can move on to the language basics.